Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be about how to make a cosmetic formula. Now you might have been here before where I actually had a video up, but I feel like that video didn't explain as much and I had a lot of questions and I want to go over the formulating process and break it down as easy as possible for people that are beginning to formulate. So the biggest question is, what is a cosmetic formula? A cosmetic formula is written out in percents and then the formula is transferred into a weighed out recipe. A cosmetic formula is also equal to 100%. So it cannot go over 100%. If it's over 100%, it's inaccurate. Weight out recipe can be in grams, kilograms, and milliliters. Recipe versus formula. Making products is not just about throwing all these ingredients together to make a product. You can't make a recipe with two cups of shea butter and three cups of coconut oil. It does not work like that. Say your brand blows up and you would need to replicate your product into bigger batches. When using a recipe, it can be challenging to do so and also impossible due to the inconsistency of accurate measuring. And that will bring you back to square one. Volume versus weight. When formulating, you cannot mix volume, which is also known as milliliters, and weight, which is also known as grams, because this will be inaccurate and you won't have the right measurements to mix these volume and weight together. Remember, one gram does not equal one milliliter. Two measurements are mixed together, the calculations will be wrong. Volume is only for water-based products. I want to like keep that in your mind so when you're formulating, you know, volume is for like body sprays, facial sprays, hairspray. Uh, perfumes, things of that nature that has mostly liquid. Weight is for creams, lotions, shampoos, conditioners, um, body washes, things of that nature. Me personally, I suggest everyone to use grams even with liquid. You don't have to. You can measure in volume, which is also known as milliliters. You can, but I suggest you not to. That is your own decision. Um, I just believe that grams is better and just easier to work with. Why should you use a percentage formula? When using a percentage formula, this ensures that your product will have the same texture, scent, color, and everything else your product is like when you first made that successful batch. You want to formulate the same product and have the same outcome every time you formulate that product. This is the reason why we use percentage formulas. What if you are formulating in grams? Before I get into converting your grams into percents, I do want everybody to keep in mind that I will only be weighing and formulating in grams only on this channel. And also I will only be showing you how to convert your grams into percents. I will not be showing you how to convert your cups into uh, percents, your teaspoons into percents. I will never Never talk about it I won't even talk about converting your milliliters into percent I will only be talking about converting grams and working with grams on this channel when formulating you will always have a batch size and that batch size depends on how much product would you want to make you would have to know what batch size you would like to make if you're testing out your products I suggest you to make a small batch size some like around 50 gram batch and or 70 90 something that's really really small in addition converting grams into percents you will have to take the gram per ingredient multiply it by 100 and divide it by the total grams that is your batch size so for an example if you already have a weighed out recipe you would already have a batch size count every ingredients grams and add it up so for an example I have ingredients by gram which is shea butter 40 grams cocoa butter 10 grams almond oil 15 grams hemp seed oil 11 grams and lemon essential oil is one gram and that all equals up to 77 grams so that is a 77 gram batch so now we're going to convert the shea butter the shea butter is 40 grams and multiply it by 40 times 100 the 100 is basically 100% um, for the formula. The formula has to equal to 100%. That's basically what the 100 is for. And that equals 4,000. Now we divide it by 77 grams and that equals 51.95. So now you have your ingredients by grams and by percents as well. And you can use that and replicate that formula. 
Please make sure after you're converting your grams into percents, add up your percents and it should equal to 100%. If your grams does not equal to 100%, then you would need to check your work, check your math. Maybe you would need to round up or maybe you have rounded up and you needed to round down. So there's also another way to convert your weight to percents. You would have the number of gram of your ingredient, one ingredient, divided by the total gram batch and then multiply it by 100. For example, you have 25 grams of olive oil in your recipe and your total weight of your recipe is 80 grams. You take the 25 gram divided by 80 grams, multiply it by 100 and it equals 31.25%. Converting percents into grams. Now you have made a formula and you would like to know how to convert your percents into grams. Let me pause and say a lot of people on social media do say that you can look it up on Google, but I'd rather do my own math. And I actually was the person to say, ask how much of this percent goes into 100 or whatever batch size that you're making. I really suggest you not to use Google and to use your brain and use your math and this is why I'm providing you um, the formulas to use so you can use it when you're doing your math. So what you do is you take the percentage of your ingredient divided by 100 and then multiply it by your batch size. Here's an example. Let's say our macadamia oil percentage is 17.8% and our batch size will be 250 grams. Take the percentage of the macadamia oil, which is 17.8% and divide by 100 and then we multiply it by 250 grams and it equals 44.50 grams. So after you have converted your your percents into grams, make sure you have counted up all your grams and it should equal up to your batch size. For an example, the 17.8% macadamia oil in the batch size was 250 grams. Now if I would have added up all the ingredients after converting them into grams, they should all add up to 250 grams. That is a 250 gram batch. How much of the ingredient you would need to use for your formula? Let's say that you would like to make a body butter and you're looking up the usage rate for the ingredients you will be using for your product. As we see shea butter on makingcosmetics.com, the usage rate is 3% to 100%. After looking at your usage rate, you'll know how much shea butter you would want to use in your body butter by asking yourself what type of filling are you looking for in your body butter what do you want what's the goal for this product who who's the target audience who who is this product for so you'll ask all those questions for yourself and come up with a answer and then you can go with the percentage of the ingredient you would like to have the product be like I also have a video that goes in depth about body butters and things that you would need to know about body butters and so if you would like to watch that video I'll make sure I link it down below and also up in the cards up above. Always do your research on your ingredients and your usage rates. I suggest you not to go over the usage rate of your ingredient because it can also be very unsafe and very dangerous for your consumers and also your formula. Please stay between the usage rates to be safe. For an example, say we have liquid germal as our preservative. The preservative, I believe it's supposed to be 1%, no more than 1%. Somebody might ask, well, hey, I wanna make sure no yeast, no mold go into my product. Let me put it in 3%, uh -uh. no, don't do that. Please do not do that. Let's talk about phases. When formulating, you will normally have three phases, which is water phase, which is also known as aqueous phase, oil phase, which is also known as anhydrous phase, and then you also have cool down phase. Please keep in mind when using these phases, it depends on what type of product you are making. For an example, if we're making a facial oil, we won't have water in our facial oil unless we're making a serum, but we're not making a serum, we're making an anhydrous product meaning the anhydrous product doesn't have 
a water phase. So the oil would all be in that one phase, which is phase A. It all depends on what type of product you are making. Phase A, which is also known as water phase, is generally water-based or water-soluble ingredients. This phase may or may not be heated depending on what type of product you are formulating. Examples of ingredients that can be added into this phase is water, hydrosols, botanicals, hem hemectants, and thickeners. Phase B is oil phase, which has oil soluble and or oil based ingredients. So ingredients that would be in this phase are oils, butters, emulsifiers, and thickeners. Phase C is generally the cool down phase and those have heat sensitive ingredients. With phase C, you would have to make sure your ingredients is cooled down enough to add phase C into your other ingredients. Phase C would generally be your cooled down ingredients that are heat sensitive, meaning that you would have to make sure your ingredients are at the right temperature for your cooled down ingredients to come together into your other ingredients. If your formulation isn't cooled down enough for phase C, this can destabilize your phase C ingredients and also affect your ingredients from doing its job in your formulation. So last thing I will cover in this area is when you are using water in your formulation, you would need to have a pH testing, meaning testing the product's pH. The skin's pH ranges from 5.0 to 5.5 and the hair's pH is 4.5 to 5.5. I will have a video going into depth about pH and why you should check your product's pH and etc. What if you don't know what ingredients go in which phase? When buying your ingredients, your supplier should have more information about your ingredient, what it does to the hair and skin, and also what phase does it work great in. And it will usually say water soluble and or oil soluble and or it might even tell you that it could work in water and oil and then that's where you go into your cosmetic lab and you see how do you like this ingredient do you like it in the water phase and or the oil phase testing your ingredients and formulating with them is great to know how to formulate with those types of ingredients effectively here are some suppliers that i use for my brand and also when i am formulating videos for you all the first one and it's my favorite i get most of my ingredients from this supplier which is makingcosmetics.com i love that you can choose what type of size ingredients you'll like for example i got these small sizes because i wanted to see like um for a a certain type of formula and i got these type of ingredients and they're small this is 4.2 flu fluid ounces and this is 3.5 ounce ounces and i love that because say like you guys are now formulating but you don't really have a lot of money but you could get these small sizes and work with what you have so if you ever have a thought that oh i don't have an enough money i have a supplier for you girl go on ahead and go to that supplier right now get your ingredients that you'll like you can make a simple um product which you can start off with body butters and or a facial oil search up your oils see what type of oils you like and formulate with those products you have this video to help you out and yeah next is essentialwholesale.com i actually love this business i love them so so much formulators sample shop.com now we have reached the end of this video i hope this video has helped you become a better formulator if you have questions about anything that i have said in this video please comment down below i would love to help you all but please keep in mind that i'm not going to be able to answer everybody's questions because of me continuing to work outside of YouTube. Also, I have a link down below with converting grams into percents and percents into grams. If you would like to practice, I have quizzes and it will be linked down below. You can take as many quizzes as you would like so you can get the hang of converting your grams into percents and or your percents into grams also last but not least please make sure you hit on that notification bell make sure you like comment share see you guys till next time bye